Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Painted Studio. We are on very, very early this morning. You can see I'm kind of at an odd angle because I've adjusted the camera so you can see more space here when we're working today. And uh, I'm just playing with my camera at the moment to turn everything around so I know you can see everything going on. And here we go, opening up my screen. So like I said, we're on early today, but I have a lot going on and I didn't want you to miss anything. So by the time my natural normal time for doing a live rolls around, it will be done and over with and I didn't want you to miss it. So the first thing we're doing today is we are demolding all of our pores from yesterday to see how each one came out, whether the results happened the way I saw them in videos. Uh, or if I need to keep working on them and seeing what I can make happen. Then we're going to go and do the silver leaf gilding on the corbels. I have sized them yesterday and um, now they're ready to go. I could have worked on them last night, but I wanted to get them done today when I was awake and fresh and you could hear me yawning already. Sorry, it's still a little early for me. So I'm gonna zoom in on my space right here. We're gonna pop these molds. We're not gonna play around. I do wanna remind everybody it's Memorial Day weekend, which means it's also the last few days of our product of the month sale, uh, which is texture medium for 20% off with the code TEXT20 at checkout. Uh, let me pull my garbage bag up here. I have a little garbage bag I keep next to me so that when I clean up stuff, I can do that. Now we're going to zoom in here on the molded items so that you can see what each of them came out like. So um, they did continue to shift. So these nice clear cells that I had in this one last night, they're a little blurrier, but that's okay. This one... Um, also came out really cool. I'm, I'm really happy. I think this one might have been be the one that I think looks the muddiest so far. This one where we poured the colors and then kind of swirled it, it looks like an explosion that really came out nicely. Um, these two, I want to see what the undersides look like because that was part of what I was trying to figure out if this method worked or if I needed to use... Um, uh, a heat gun blowing it to make it work. So let's start with this one. Now, I fair warning, these are going to be slippery. Uh, and I may put them back in the molds later because they are, yeah. The pretty part is on top, but if you look closely, there's a little ridge here. And that means I need to put something on it to dome it a little bit um, just to fill in that edge because I, if I sand it here, I'm going to lose this detail. So the bottom part of this, totally uninteresting. All the heaviest pigment settled to the bottom as I expected, but before I can pour more epoxy on it, I have to clean it. So in my spray here, I have denatured alcohol because we used a lot of silicone on this uh, uh, yesterday and you need to remove all the silicone from the surface. few little bubbles and pits came up at the last second, which makes me even happier with the idea of pouring over uh, a little more epoxy just to get it filled in. Same with this one. The demolding is going to be fine. Now the bottom did come out kind of interesting, but not as cool as the top, but the bottom has its own unique look. So I'm going to stick that again back in the mold. And this is only going to take a little tiny bit of epoxy in here, so I'm going to pour it really carefully later, get it domed over so I have a nice smooth surface because this is clearly the part that I want to be the top. And um, even though I did torch it last night, I torched it a couple times, there's a little tiny bit of pitting in here from where the silicone was. Let's pop this one. Let's see if anything, again, little bit of interest at kind of dragon scaly stuff happening on the bottom, which is very pretty, but the top side is the more interesting side. So I, I really like in the way that happened, but the circle pores gave me that dragon scale thing that I had been mentioning before. So hopefully we're going to see more of that in these big square ones. Okay, let's pull that. That 
let's check this one. Now this one had way more interesting texture on the bottom, but again, the top is the prettier side in my opinion. So we're gonna clean that off. Now I know a lot of people will top this with a U, uh, product called UV Cure Resin. You can do that if you want, or you can just mix a little more epoxy and uh, see what that does. Now this should be pretty good because I got this a little overfilled last night. Okay, it did not do any of the dragon scaling stuff that I thought might happen on the bottom. It's very pretty and very subtle, so the top side is definitely the more interesting side. Uh, if I want to, I can put it back in the mold because there's a tiny bit of pitting again in here. I might want to drop a couple more drops of epoxy on here. I haven't decided. I'll figure that out later. Let's see what this one did. Now that one, you got a little more of the scaling kind of thing happening, a little more of the burst. You used a lot more white in this, and that's very, very pretty that way, and it's very, very pretty this way. So this one was, I think this one came out more successfully than the pink one did. Um, I might try this dragon scale thing again with um, using some alcohol inks too, just to vary the weight of the pigments. I think that's part of it that needs to happen. And you need to make sure that there's a lot of white in it. Because the white is a heavy pigment. You could do it with black, but I think the black, unless you have a lot of light colors, you don't get a good contrast. So there's the demolding of that. We are not unmolding the skull. Um, because as you notice, it's only about a quarter to a third full. I'm going to get in here with the denatured alcohol on the surface. Let's give it a spray. And I'm not spraying at all. So that the epoxy will adhere. So we got great results from that. I don't know what happened. We just went blank on my screen. Oh, good, we're back. Um, so very cool results. I'm, you know, epoxy is kind of experimental. It's fun to play with. Where did my bed go? I need to see. Somebody popped in, and I thought I saw a comment. Hi, Robin and Cindy and Darlene and Desiree. Thank you for coming in. So again, very cool looking on this side. Trying to get in my own screen. Very cool looking on this side. And I think the most successful one on the bottom for the other pattern is this. You get a very, very pretty starburst pattern this way. Um, I was hoping it would be a little more defined. You can see this almost cellular pattern going on in here. Almost. I was hoping that would be more defined and look like they, it's the person who did it called it a dragon scale pattern. It did not work out that way, but this side is just as pretty, but I'm really happy with what I've learned here. So I would definitely do all of this with the silicone oils and other stuff all over again. I might try it again after we get off of here. That might be my last thing I do today because as we all know, silicone's very messy. Uh, I want to spray my hands with a little alcohol right now just to make sure I don't have any silicone residue on it before I grab my corbels and start gilding because I don't want to deposit uh, any silicone huh, on the corbels because that's going to make top coating it harder. All right, so here are the corbels. Um, I cleaned up all the gold leaf on there. There's a few touch-up spots that I need to do, but the next thing I want to do, because there's a couple of um, blank spots, Right, and let me let me adjust my camera here. You're not seeing what I'm doing. I had it adjusted for one thing. Give me just a second. Let me adjust where the zoom is. All right, there we go. I need these a little closer to me to see what's going on. 
So I have a couple touch-up spots right in here and one right in here, and it's the same on the other one, but I'm going to do that after I finish putting the silver leaf on the rest of the body. Now, um, you can see little flecks of the other col colors leaf on here, but that's okay because um, I actually sanded it down so it was butter smooth before. I'm sorry, there's little bits of fuzz from me wiping it down and... You know, this is the kind of stuff that always happens. And I'm, there's a couple bristles from the brushes stuck on a few spots. And that happens. That's why there's touch-up spots needed. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to turn this in. I need to turn this in a way that you all can see what I'm doing. And I can see what I'm doing. So uh, I think, let's see can't have it up because then I can't see it. Let's try it this way. I'm going to try it that way and hopefully I'll be able to see what I'm doing. So we're going to use aluminum leaf. I am not using real silver because just like the other, uh, I just want to kind of get into this with my hands. The silver leaf requires a tip and it requires the gilder's pad and all of that and I don't feel like doing that right now. Even though I love it, I just don't feel like doing it. Is this all shredded pieces? Or do I have any whole sheets still in here? I go through my buckets and I just have to figure out what I've got in of stuff. And I don't always know. Uh, let's see what I've got. All right. Now this composition, this is called composition silver. It's all the, otherwise known as aluminum leaf. This will be a little easier for me to lay out on here just because it's going on such a smooth area. Let me get my tip, or I mean my mop, and get in there. And then because I've got this edge here, I can just sort of pounce on it and break it off. As you can see, I'm literally folding it over the lip to have it place itself nice and neatly. I'm, I'm going to have a little breakage right in here, so I'm going to have to come back in and touch that spot up. I know that. in right there and what I'm doing because there's a double crease right here there's a double fold on this and that's where the leaf broke before so this is where I want to make sure I get it in and get it adhered into the crease and because it's aluminum, it's not going to patina with me putting my hands on it. So I don't worry at all about um, my fingers being on it. Now, if you notice, you might have thought of picture frames and framing like this. You get that mirror shine on this from it. That's because they usually apply a gesso and then a bowl, which is a clay. And, and then it's able to be compressed and burnished with a burnishing agate. Do I have my agate here? where you, they use a tool like this over gesso and bowl, which is a soft material, then they push it down and they use this tool to compress it. This is paint over wood. And up close, you're seeing the texture of the wood. The reason this is a little matted looking is it's the texture of the wood underneath the paint. That's not been smoothed out, made plaster smooth like they do with gesso and bowl on, on framing. I love this look. I actually love that kind of slightly brushed texture. I find it very, very beautiful, but I'm just explaining what the difference is. All right, we're going to take another piece of aluminum leaf. We're going to put it here. Let's see if I can manage to fold it into that. Not really. 
ended up just tearing it. Here we are turning around. Now, a lot of gilders do not put their hands in the metals as much as I do, and they're not wrong. Um, get, it's my hand, you just saw, I sprayed my hands down with alcohol, so it's super, they're super, super dry. Um, but that doesn't always work in every situation. Uh, real gold, too thin to do this. Composition gold, if my hands were oilier, I could be causing patinaing to happen. Um, so I know that some of the stuff I show you guys, but this is how I do it just to make me happy. If I really wanted to, needed to, I would put it on. I could just as easily be putting gloves on, handling it. I'd be wearing cotton gloves, not uh, blue Nitrile gloves, not latex gloves. I'd be wearing cotton gloves so that no oils or chemicals from my hands could get on anything and patina stuff. I'm not particularly concerned about that right now. I'm embracing whatever patina my hand oils might put on here. Might not do anything. I know it's not going to affect the silver, but it could affect this. And that's why when you go to a Gilder studio, you see everybody handling everything very carefully with gloves on because the oils from your hands can cause patina in the metal that you don't want. Me, I'm just kind of playing with this today and having fun, so I don't care. And it's for me. So again, whatever messes I create, I have to live with. Okay, so I've folded that over nice and neatly. We're going to come in here again with our skewings brush. Or a mop brush, whichever one you want to call it. I usually refer to the mop as the brush that's applying gilders liquor to a surface, um, which is used in water gilding. And a skewings brush is the brush you use to get all the extra metal off of surfaces, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm using this brush to get in there, kind of break off all the loose metals. I'm going to probably take all the skewings from this job today. Um, and when I finish this, whatever loose stuff is in here, I'm going to mix it with the epoxy and fill it in, that I use to fill in the skull. Okay, let's come back here and do this. Now, ideally, I shouldn't have laid this side down on the uh, parchment paper. I should have been doing it upright, but you all wouldn't have been able to see what I was doing because this side is sticky too. But again, I kind of knew what I was doing when I was doing it. So any problems I create, these are for me, so I have to live with it. How beautiful that aluminum goes on so nicely and the beautiful thing with aluminum it won't patina it won't tarnish it won't turn funny colors because aluminum doesn't 
that's the nature of aluminum. So I'm going to come here for a minute and do this. And then I'll get this corner. Let's see if I can do a nicer corner than I was doing there on the other side. kind of tore off at a nice clean angle there. Made it easy for me to get in here. I don't know who was, if my sound went dead for a second there, my sound is still going dead for a second there. Um, it's because I just received a phone call. I forgot to turn off my settings. Oops. Okay, let's get this. Now I have all of these big pieces here and what they're gonna do is be used to go into these spots in here and fill it in. One more piece of silver. I have enough for aluminum. Composition aluminum as they refer to it. Otherwise known as aluminum. And the tack on this is just perfect. I applied this last night before I went home and this has similar tack to oil size. As you can see, there's no brush marks in it, so it lays out beautifully. It has a nice leveling property to it. This is why I love Roberson's uh, acrylic gold leaf size. I have, every time I use it, I'm impressed because I've used lots of other water sizes. I see terrible brush marks with them, lots of bu uh, bubbles that don't want to break, and then it leaves pitting when you want to apply your leaf. This stuff, loving it loving it and um, I don't know if you all remember but I do a lot of gold leaf with oil size this is all breaking up and sticking on my thumb so we're just going to kind of patch it in here that's going to be the messy spot right there every one of these has a messy spot Everything I do always is going to have one messy spot, and this is going to be it right here. It's still cleaning out really nicely. Really, really nicely. the very, I have a piece to put in here and I have some to put in there. So let me get this big chunk here. And then let me turn it this way so I can see this front here. So I have more than enough big pieces to manage at least this part. Sorry if I'm winging this around in a way that you weren't seeing it very well. That's, that's the other thing with leaf. Don't take a deep breath and blow out, which I, is literally what I just did. <laughs> Even laughing down there. This is why gilding is one of those kind of zen things where you just want to be quiet and relax. Now I have to get in here and fill in all of these little spots in here, but I'm going to do the next one 
get all the big pieces gilded on first and then we'll go back. Uh, okay. Let me zoom it in a little so you see better. There you go. Sorry, moving my phone out of the way so you all can see. Let me see if you've got any questions. see. Hey, Shannon. Thank you, Desiree. It is pretty. <laughs> Desiree, get your mom's skirt on. Uh, uh, the carved design, this area, this was carved, uh, covered in a variegated leaf that I bought years ago from Sep Leaf in New York. Um, I went on a buying spree a couple years ago in New York. I, I want to say more than a couple years ago, because um, I don't. I, I buy things. I, I buy things like leaf, and then it goes into a box waiting for me to, or a bin waiting for me to find a use for it. Um, and that's literally what happened here. Um, so I had to have bought that at least eight years ago, and then it just waited for the project to come up. So this is a pink variegated leaf. Uh, I'm very excited to use it because I have a Everybody's calling me today. I'm sorry. So it cuts the sound out for a little while. I apologize. Um, be patient if the sound goes out when that happens. But if I uh, get off of here to go fix it, um, we lose this we lose the live so all right let's get back into some aluminum leaf this is i don't know this is mona lisa aluminum leaf i told you i have stuff from everywhere you know i bought this when i was doing a job in a in a home and because it doesn't go you know it doesn't tarnish it just sat it's it's i've had it for years literally years so now we're going to fold this over the front here i'm just smoothing it with my fingers uh, where did my, my, my skewings brush go? I'll break this off at the edge right down here. And I'm just tamping it onto the surface, however much of it's covered. And if it sticks a little to the carved part, that's fine. That means there was a little adhesive that I missed before. But most of it will not bond on there. There just might be a little bit of a, an overlap. Let's get this on here. Get it in here. Tuck it down. This goes on so pretty. And right here, we just have a little overlap. So that's when you take the skewings brush and knock it off. And again, I'll come back over this with t-shirt material and wipe it down. But I have like a spot here that I think I put the leaf size on too thin. So there's a little, it just came right off there. I know I covered the whole thing, but if you put it on thin, this even though this is supposedly stays sticky indefinitely, it really only stays sticky for a few days for working. Um, and I much prefer to come back in and repair because this, the Robersons allows me to repair with almost seamless perfection. I really like that because it goes on so thin. See, there's two spots, one here, one here, that just need a little size, and I'll get that later after I've fixed everything else, you know, after I've gilded it all. Now, gilding specifically in the terms. Well, how are you doing, Ace? I have a big product for you. Oh, great, thank you. 
All right, folks, well, guess what? My palette from Roberson's is five days early, or I mean from Whitson's is five days early, which means I have to get off this live and take the products in. That's very exciting. All right, everybody, thanks for being here. I'll, ca I'll talk with you later. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, I'll be right there.